So um, I think we need to, to situate the discussion a little bit in, in, in the global picture. The, the agenda of 2030 actually has a very clear um, goal, a very clear target relating to international migration. It's 10.7. And it calls on all countries for safe, legal, and orderly migration and mobility. And there is a reason why it does that, because it recognizes from the beginning that international migration leads to growth. And the idea was that if we have growth, then growth will spill over and create better migration management policies. And I would say that specifically as regards this goal, as with many of the SDG goals right now, in the middle of the pandemic, we've seen significant backsliding. This includes the global level, Europe um, and Greece, um, to a large extent, as regards migration. One thing we should keep in mind is that the pandemic, as well as various challenges, climate, for example, have actually been used as an excuse by the member states, but also by most of the countries of the global north to actually close their borders, impose restricted regimes of migration, clump down on global resettlement, which pretty much paused for the first year of the pandemic, impacting thousands. Um, closing borders and sending migrants home, which impacted remittances, and that's also going to spill over into local growth, but of course the costs are going to have to be borne by the global north in the long run. Um, so instead of moving forward, we seem to be moving backwards, using the challenges and the crisis as a very good justification for, for not undertaking more radical reforms. And, and I was glad to hear the minister say that, um, for example, in the field of agriculture, there's finally a recognition that we do have potentially working hands here in Greece that would be useful and could contribute into the local economy and growth, but also become independent in, the, in their living. Uh, but imagine how this would look like if from the beginning we had legal pathways and we wouldn't push people towards um, coming into Europe in an undocumented uh, manner. One of the things that is important to, to highlight as we move forward is that to, to meet the, the, the goal of 10.7, we need a broader spectrum of understanding of international migration. Asylum seekers need to be included into the people who move. Forced migrants need to be factored in because increasingly people are going to be moving due to abject poverty, climate crisis, localized conflicts. They fall outside the regular protection frameworks that we have, like the 1951 convention, but it doesn't mean that they are returnable. It doesn't mean that they don't need some form of protection, and that implies long or short-term investment from the host country um, perspective. But if the host countries understand that there is um, benefits to welcoming the migrants in their midst um, in, in a regular and orderly manner, then there are multiple benefits beyond the economy. For example, we combat smuggling. One of the things that we saw in 2015 amidst the so-called European refugee crisis is that as more than 800,000 people came into Greece and the overwhelming majority of those actually left the country fairly quickly. And if I just add as a caveat here, they did so because Greece, of course, could not handle welcoming 800,000 people. We need to be realistic about that. But at the same time, lacked various levels of protections and services that needed to be in place. As they moved, they moved swiftly because the borders were open. And as they moved swiftly with borders open and with policies like the ones in Germany welcoming the Syrians, the smugglers went out of business. So we do have concrete evidence that show that if we want to combat smuggling, for example, legal pathways is one of the ways to do it. It's not the only one, but it's definitely one that is important to keep in mind. And the other thing that I think is important as we try to reach the, uh, the agenda goals is that the private industry needs to have a much more prominent role being involved. Whether that is in terms of investments, where they invest, how they invest, integrating the human rights dimension um, into uh, their business models, but also private sponsorship schemes, both for legal migrants and also for asylum seekers. And when I say legal migrants, I think we need to keep in mind that here in, in Europe especially, the focus is very much on highly skilled migration. There is no doubt that it's important and it leads to growth. And of course, all countries need it. But we should also remember that highly skilled migrants can move. They don't really need a lot of assistance. They need incentives to be attracted to a specific country, but they can still cross borders fairly easily. It's the unskilled migration that usually follows highly skilled migration because jobs are created that need unskilled migration. These are the people that should be included in legal uh, migration schemes. These are the ones that need to be supported because they are the ones who actually send their remittances back home. And they are the ones that facilitate uh, growth on both levels.